August 19 to 30, two week spoilers for Bold and the Beautiful. Taylor snaps and a new killer target. Welcome to my channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before starting the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button and give this video a like up. Brave and Gorgeous from August 19 to 30, 2024. Spectators may expect a maelstrom of emotions and clashes. As pandemonium spirals out of control for Hope Logan, Annika Noel, Taylor Hayes is prepared to stir things up. Poppy Nozawa, Romy Park, is shown in the opening scene of the action appealing with Lee Finnegan, Naomi Matsuda, in jail. Viewers and her sister are therefore astonished by this. Luna makes an unexpected move that leaves Bill Spencer, Don Diamond, astonished. After returning to Forrester Creations, Taylor engages in heated conversations with Brooke Logan, Catherine Kelly Lang, and Ridge. On August 20, the actress Rebecca Budig tackles the matter when Taylor confronts Ridge about Brooke in the CBS opera. The moment Finn, Tanner Novlin, discloses Hope's behavior, Steffi Forrester, Jacqueline Messinswood, becomes visibly enraged. At Forrester Creations, Steffi confronts Hope in the ongoing drama. Bold and the Beautiful's August 22 episode features Brooke learning about the Finn and Hope story and having a tense conversation with Ridge. As the week comes to an end, Katie Logan, Heather Tom, is shown triumphing over Poppy, but things aren't quite as they seem. Vibrant and lovely Steffi is excited to have her mother, Taylor, back in town the week of August 26. Thus, this could cause Brooke and Taylor to become more tense. While Steffi struggles to deal with the fallout from Hope's actions, Ridge is caught between Brooke and Taylor. Bill is still in shock at Poppy's imprisonment and the results of the DNA test. With a real murderer at large, viewers can anticipate an exciting conclusion. Get all of the news and spoilers for Bold and the Beautiful every day right here, and check back for updates on the whereabouts of your favorite characters. The sun rose over Los Angeles, casting a warm golden glow over the sprawling mansions and bustling streets. Inside the Forrester mansion, the tension was palpable. The wall seemed to vibrate with unspoken fears and secrets, as if they could no longer contain the weight of what was coming. Taylor Hayes, the brilliant psychiatrist with a tumultuous past, stood in front of the mirror in her elegantly decorated bedroom. She had always prided herself on her ability to remain calm and collected, even in the face of chaos. But today, something was different. Her hands trembled as she tried to apply her makeup, her mind racing with a thousand thoughts. She had been feeling increasingly on edge for the past few weeks, ever since her return to Los Angeles. The whispers, the secrets, the lies, everything seemed to be closing in on her. She felt like she was on the brink of something, but she couldn't quite put her finger on it. As she finished getting ready, she heard a knock on her door. It was Ridge Forrester, her ex-husband and the father of her children. His face was lined with concern, his eyes searching hers for answers. Taylor, are you okay? He asked softly. You've seemed different lately. Taylor forced a smile, trying to hide the turmoil inside her. I'm fine, Ridge, just a lot on my mind. Ridge nodded, but he wasn't convinced. He had known Taylor for too long to be fooled by her facade. He could see the cracks in her armor, the signs that she was struggling to keep it together. Taylor, if there's anything you need to talk about, I'm here, he said gently. You don't have to go through this alone. Taylor's smile faltered, and for a moment, she considered opening up to him. But then she remembered all the pain and betrayal, all the times she had let her guard down only to be hurt again. She couldn't afford to be vulnerable, not now. Thank you, Ridge, she said, her voice steady. But I'm fine, really. Ridge nodded, but he could see the pain in her eyes. He wished he could do something to help her, but he knew that Taylor was a strong woman. She would find her way through this, just like she always had. As Ridge left the room, Taylor turned back to the mirror, her smile fading. She knew that something was coming, something dark and dangerous, and she wasn't sure if she was ready to face it. 
Over the next few days, Taylor's unease grew. She tried to focus on her work, her patients, her family, but the sense of impending doom was always there, lurking in the back of her mind. She started having nightmares, vivid and terrifying visions that left her shaken and exhausted. One night, she dreamed that she was standing on the edge of a cliff, the wind whipping through her hair, the waves crashing against the rocks below. She could hear someone calling her name, but when she turned around, there was no one there. She felt a hand on her back, and then she was falling, she woke falling up with into a start, the darkness. her heart pounding, her body drenched in sweat. She tried to shake off the dream, but it lingered like a shadow in the corners of her mind. As the days went on, Taylor's anxiety became harder to hide. She started snapping at people, her temper flaring at the slightest provocation. She found herself losing her patience with her patients, her colleagues, even her own children. She knew she needed to get a grip, but it felt like something inside her was unraveling, like a thread being pulled from a tightly woven tapestry. One afternoon, she was in her office at Forrester Creations, reviewing some paperwork when Steffi walked in. Taylor could see the concern in her daughter's eyes, the worry that had been building for weeks. Mom, are you okay? Steffi asked, her voice gentle. You've been acting different lately. Is everything all right? Taylor felt a surge of frustration, a wave of anger that she couldn't quite control. I'm fine, Steffi, she snapped. I don't need you to babysit me. Steffi recoiled, hurt flashing across her face. I'm just worried about you, Mom. We all are. Taylor took a deep breath, trying to calm herself. She didn't mean to lash out at Steffi, but the pressure was becoming too much. I'm sorry, Steffi, she said softly. I'm just, I'm just under a lot of stress right now. Steffi nodded, but Taylor could see that she wasn't convinced. Maybe you should take some time off, Mom. You've been through a lot lately. It might help. Taylor shook her head. No, I can't. I have too much work to do. I'll be fine. I just need to get through this. Steffi didn't push the issue, but Taylor could see the worry in her eyes. She wished she could reassure her daughter, but the truth was, she wasn't sure if she could get through this. Not this time. The tension reached a breaking point on the evening of August 26. The Forrester family had gathered at the mansion for a dinner, hoping to bring some sense of normalcy back to their lives. But the air was thick with unspoken fears and hidden tensions. Taylor sat at the table, her eyes darting around the room. She could feel the weight of everyone's gaze on her, the silent questions they were too afraid to ask. She could hear their whispers, their judgments, their doubts. She tried to focus on the conversation, to pretend that everything was fine. But her mind was racing, her thoughts spinning out of control. She felt like she was trapped in a cage, with no way out. Finally, she couldn't take it anymore. She slammed her hand down on the table, her eyes blazing with anger. Will you all just stop? She shouted, her voice trembling with fury. Stop looking at me like I'm some kind of ticking time bomb. I'm fine. I'm not crazy. The room fell silent, everyone staring at Taylor in shock. No one knew what to say, how to respond. They had never seen her like this before. Ridge reached out, trying to calm her down. Taylor, please, just take a deep breath. We're all here for you. But Taylor wasn't listening. She was too far gone, her emotions spiraling out of control. I don't need your pity, Ridge, she snapped. I don't need any of you. I'm fine on my own. With that, she pushed her chair back and stormed out of the room, leaving everyone in stunned silence. They could hear her footsteps echoing down the hallway, the sound of a door slamming shut. For a moment, no one knew what to do. They were all frozen, caught in the aftermath of Taylor's outburst. Finally, Steffi stood up, her face set with determination. I'm going to go check on her, she said quietly. She's not okay. Ridge nodded, his face lined with worry. Just be careful, Steffi. She's, she's not herself right now. Steffi nodded and hurried out of the room, her heart pounding with fear. She knew that her mother was on the edge, and she didn't know what would happen next. As Steffi made her way down the hallway, 
she heard a strange noise coming from Taylor's bedroom. It sounded like something was being thrown around, like a struggle was taking place. Her heart raced as she pushed open the door, her eyes widening in shock at what she saw. Taylor was standing in the middle of the room, her face contorted with rage. She was holding a vase, her eyes wild and unfocused. The room was a mess, with furniture overturned and broken glass scattered across the floor. Mom, what are you doing? Steffi asked, her voice trembling. You need to calm down. Taylor turned to face her, her eyes narrowing with suspicion. Calm down? Why should I calm down? Everyone thinks I'm crazy anyway, so why should I pretend to be something I'm not? Steffi took a step forward, trying to keep her voice steady. Mom, no one thinks you're crazy. We're all just worried about you. Please put the vase down. But Taylor wasn't listening. She was too far gone, her mind consumed by anger and paranoia. You think I'm weak, don't you? She spat. You think I can't handle this?